Hello and welcome to Love's United Methodist Church. We're glad that you have joined us today for a time of, of meditation that will be a little bit different service than we usually have. Uh, our in-person service this week, we have a, a guest speaker, Philip Loomis from Gideon's. So today I'm going to do a different, uh, shorter meditation for our online service. As we join our hearts together, we remember we still join together to worship. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, for this opportunity together to praise your name, to worship you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Our scripture for today, I wanted to use just as a, a brief meditation time, expound on these words a little bit, it comes from Mark chapter 6, uh, beginning at uh, verse 30 and reading through uh, 35 or 36, wherever I feel led to stop. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. I will stop there with a reading and expound on that. But this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The disciples had been busy. They were doing all the things that Jesus had taught him them and were so busy, as the text says, they hadn't even had time to eat. Have you ever been so busy that you forgot to eat lunch in the middle of the afternoon? You look up and think, goodness, why do I feel this way? It's because you forgot to actually stop and drink a bottle of water or, or have a light lunch or whatever the case might be. And you're thinking, goodness, 
No wonder I'm running around like crazy. I hadn't even had time to stop to eat. This is exactly what happens with the disciples. And Jesus recognizes uh, what is going on in their life. That they've been so busy running to and fro like a chicken with her head cut off kind of thing that they hadn't even had time to stop and take care of their physical bodies because they hadn't even taken the leisure even to eat or their spiritual bodies being so caught up in everything that was going on, they were drained. And Jesus recognizes this and says, you know, you need to get away to a deserted place. We need to go and, and have some downtime knowing that the strength to do what they were doing could only come from God. Jesus recognized this and realized this and was teaching that to the disciples. I think sometimes we forget about that in the church because we think this has to be done and that has to be done, and it does. And we're thinking if we just work a little harder, a little faster, and you put off all the important things of life attending to our own spiritual lives. But it's not just the scripture that's powerful, it's the placement in our text that makes it so powerful. Here's what I mean by that. Just before this reading that we have just looked at, these four verses that we've just looked at in John 6, read 30 through 34, just before that, John the Baptist had been executed. This is one of the things that the disciples had to be sharing with Jesus. We've been doing everything you taught us, Jesus, and, and still look what happened to John. John the Baptist had been executed. John and uh, John the Baptist and uh, Jesus' earthly ministry only overlapped each other about three months before John was executed. John is a, a relative of some sort. We don't know exactly what that is, but a relative of some sort of Jesus, whether it's a, a distant cousin or, or something like that. Remember Elizabeth's mother and Mary uh, met together in Elizabeth's house when they were both pregnant. She with John the Baptist and Mary, of course, with Jesus, the mother of Jesus. So there was a, a relationship there of some sort, not just a friendship, but a familial re relationship as well. And John the Baptist has just been executed. Is it getting any worse? The disciples have worked like crazy and still this has happened. And they go to Jesus telling everything that's gone on, everything they have done, everything they've seen. And Jesus says, whew. We're going to have to pull away for a little while and sort of make sense of all this. We have to process all of this. We have to, we have to take some little bit of downtime here and gain our strength from God the Father. Let's, let's go away to a deserted place for a little while. Away from the noise of the crowd. We could say the same thing with the noise of life in general, period. To steal away for a little while, to zero in on that which is most important, our relationship to God. Before they could even get where they were going, the crowds saw them. They saw where they were headed and, and actually beat them there so that when the disciples and Jesus arrived, the crowd is already there waiting for them, clamoring to be close to them, clamoring to, they needed something. They were hungry for something. They, they, knew, they knew they needed nourishment. And so they're reaching out. And our text says they were like sheep without a shepherd, without someone to, to look out for them and to care for them. What happens next is just mind blowing because we have the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And that's where I say the placement of this text that we have just looked at is just as powerful as the text itself. The worst thing imaginable the beheading, the execution of John the Baptist has just occurred. Can it ever get any worse than that? The disciples come to Jesus and say, wow, look, look at everything we've done and everything we've seen and everything that, that we've been about since we last saw you. And Jesus says, whoo, we have to make sense of this. Let, let's work our way through this. Let's process all of this. Let's take a little quiet rest. Let's gain our strength from God the Father. And look what happens next. One of the most important miracles that we refer to in all of the text is the feeding of the 5,000. I, I share that today simply because there are some difficult things going on in the church. 
And maybe we scratch our heads and say, can it get any worse? We have this this schism in the United Methodist Church. We have 20% of the churches in our Western North Carolina conference disaffiliated. That's 15% actually of the membership. So many of them were were small membership churches. But still, it was 20% of the churches disaffiliated, 15% of the membership. And maybe we're thinking, can it get any worse than this? And the answer is, well, yes, the beheading of John the Baptist certainly tells us it could get worse than that. The point, though, is rather than wringing our hands and saying, oh, woe is me, what, what now? We take that time to process everything that has gone on. We draw close to God. And powerful, powerful things can happen. We see that, uh, again, that's the reason the importance of the placement in this text. The worst of the worst happens. Take time to process it all, make sense of it all, gain our strength from God the Father, and look at the powerful things that can happen then. We can't let what has happened in the United Methodist Church with the schism that has taken place and the global Methodist Church or those churches who have chosen to become independent or align with another denomination or whatever the case might be, that's not going to affect who we are in the United Methodist Church. Who we are is who we are, the United Methodist Church, and we follow Jesus, make disciples for the transformation of the world. That, uh, that mandate has never changed. We may disagree on certain manners in which we live out our theology, shall we say, or even interpret that theology. What I hope has not changed is our mission to follow Jesus, to make disciples, to transform the world. That mission goes unchanged. Nothing has changed there. Yes, there are differences, but look at the differences There are man-made differences. The things that we've come up to argue about, whether it's in the local church or or the greater denomination, the many things we argue about that have caused uh, splintering and, and, and fracturing. And what Jesus is saying, look at this horrible thing that's happened here. Let's take time to draw close to God and look at the powerful things that can happen when we do that. I hope that's what we do. I just wanted to take this time to to chat about that briefly this morning. I hope you enjoy this time of of listening to some uh, sacred music. Reflect on this text. Again, that was Mark 6, 30 through 34. But read all of Mark 6 and see the powerful things that take place in in that chapter. Let that be what uh, drives us. Let us uh, let our attention not be distracted by all of this stuff that's going on over here or that stuff that's going on over there. But the very fact that we as the church are called to come to a deserted place, quieten our minds, recenter, reset, refocus on who we are as the church, followers of Jesus that make disciples for the transformation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
and now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing triumph in redeeming grace. O oh, refresh us, O oh, refresh us, traveling through